Okay, hello, Bia. My name is Sunday Olonushe, and you are watching Top Story with Isaac. Hey, um, you are meeting Sunday Olonushe. Ah, I call myself a serial entrepreneur because um, early enough I got to discover that um, I'm called out for entrepreneurship. So I didn't waste time pursuing um, things that will not help me achieve what I believe I'm called out for. I grew up in Lagos. Yeah, my dad um, used to be a military man. So my very early stage in life, we're all in the barracks. I was given birth to at the military hospital, Ikeja Cantonment. As a result, I went to primary school in the barracks, Army Model Primary School, secondary school in the barracks, Army Cantonment Secondary School. University was meant to be in the barracks, but I escaped it. So eventually I decided I was going to pursue a career in medicine. I wanted to be a medical doctor. You know, the number uh, writing of JAM, you did it the first time, JAM would JAM you. The second time you did well, but somehow um, when it comes to medicine, you know, so eventually I opted for a pre-degree program. Even though I didn't want to do it then, but you know, this high crusaders group, we have our counselors that would be like, guys, you guys don't want to go to school. Right? So more like forcefully go and enroll for pre-degree. And I went with the mindset that after my pre-degree program, if I do well, Maybe I'll gain admission for medicine, but I was uh, disappointed to hear that you don't gain admission for medicine through pre-degree. You can pick any other course you so want, but not medicine. The only course that was exempted. So, well, I have the grace to follow through whatever I start. So, I followed through, chose microbiology, but still with the mind that from microbiology I'll move to medicine. Maybe by the time I'm through, fourth year or if I do so well in my year one and some people will normally drop if they don't perform well, maybe they will replace and but getting to 200 level I found purpose. I discovered at that point I have no business pursuing a career in medicine. I discovered my capacity to lead and to do business. I started answering questions about my life. You know, more like you have listened to messages. Uh, one major influencer in my life is um, Dr. Miles Moreau. He's done so much on purpose. I ate everything in terms of reading all, of very voracious in consuming his materials on purpose. And while I was busy doing that, I was finding myself gradually. And I had to ask myself questions about um, right from my childhood when I got to know myself. What were the things I've always done? Um, which is, what, what are the skills that I've exhibited without struggle? So I started looking at all of those things and they started pointing to who Sunday Olonushe really is and what I should be pursuing. And right there and then, answering all of those questions, everything was pointing towards entrepreneurship, everything was pointing towards leadership, everything was pointing towards a conglomerate where your life would just be about people. Everything was also pointing towards adding value to people. Of course, growing up as a teenager, I've always had platforms to speak. Um, the High Crusaders Fellowship during the days of Four Square was a good platform to exhibit leadership capacity and also to speak, to lead people. And so many has invested into my life, many people. But I've also seen myself investing into people's lives. So right there and then I just made up my mind, oh, this is what I should be doing. But you know, I said I like to follow through. Some other people would have just stopped microbiology then. I knew it had no bearing with where I was going to. What others would have done is at that point, so why am I still studying microbiology? When I know I'm not going to need it, I'm not going to use it, I'm not going to practice for one day. But just in my habit of following through, I ensured that I graduated with my DSC honors in microbiology. And from that point, I started looking for opportunities in the area of my purpose. School was at home for a few months, but while at home also, I got engaged um, working as a volunteer in the church, you know, 
just assisting with doing one or two things in the church then. Eventually I went for youth service. Now when I got into the orientation camp in Kano State then, uh, we don't have much of these Boko Haram activities and so when they posted me to Kano I didn't feel any, okay that's where you put, let's go. go. I went with a mindset that, man, this year I want to rest because right from my teenage all through university, I've been busy jumping up and down on, you know, on campus. I wasn't just um, fellowship president. I was, uh, what's it called, at the national level too. So jumping from one university to another, that opportunity really have, um, helped me know so many parts of Nigeria. Because today I'm at Unilag, tomorrow University of Uyo, next tomorrow University of Port Harcourt, back to Bini. Uh, OAU, UI, so it was so busy and engaging for me as a national executive. So getting to the NYC, I said, man, I just want to rest. So, well, you know, somehow they'll just find you out. While I was busy hiding during the orientation camp period, they posted me to somewhere and they started the fellowship thing. Of course, I can't run away from God, anything God, I always ensure I hang around God. I've been a church boy all my life and I'm proud of it, no, no apologies about that. So they came, found me out again, made me president of, uh, what's it called, the NCCF in my uh, local government then. So the work continued because uh, when you're a leader one way or the other, you know everything rises and falls on leadership. So when they commit something to your end, you don't want it to fail. You want to put in your best to ensure that when you are living, you, you are living a lasting legacy so that people come into your shoes, they will know that you have done well. You have also grown successors that you can be sure that whatever legacy you have built, can be, they can uphold it and even do better than um, you have ever done. So I had my NYC program for one year, then returned back to Lagos. Came back to Lagos again and told myself, I want to rest. But I just showed my life has always been activity. Let me just have some three months that I'm not doing anything. Just you know, just two weeks into my coming back from Kano, I remember my fiancée, she's now my wife, came visiting on a particular Sunday. Another friend, a mutual friend, uh, both of us also came, working with an investment company then. Who was working with The Oluwani Adekunle. So he came that Sunday evening and his purpose of coming was to come and market me to buy investment and like that. My fiancée, now my wife, looked at him and said, ah, which kind of person are you? Somebody just came back from NYC. You should be talking about where you will work. You want to come and take this moment, you know, she was saying it humorously, not like. And the guy said, ah, hey, if that's the case, we have opportunity um, where I work, or if he doesn't mind, ah. So you guys have started. I said, I don't want to do anything for one month. And that was how my, the sister said, ah, man, you have to go, you have to go. So I went and attended the interview. Um, it was fun because I got there, what I'm going to say now to some people looks funny. I said I didn't want to work, right? <laughs> when I got there, you know what attracted me there? I remember I got to the office that day around 7, 15, there about. The interview was for 9 a.m. And all of a sudden, like 15 minutes later, ah, I had worship. Somebody was worshiping God. The next thing they started praising God. The next, ah, as in they were holding fellowship. And I just told myself, is this a workplace? If this is a workplace, I want to work here. If I can work and serve God, ah, that's it. They did like full service. So when they ended, I called somebody that was with me at the reception that, ah, is this how they do every day? He said, yes, I, told, I said, I'm going to work here. Not even minding what the pay package will look like that I, can, that I can walk and also worship God. It was just, for me, that was it. So I went through the interview, of course, did very well. And let me now shock you, by the time we're through, so organized the set, you know. Ah, and if you need the interview, so how much is my salary? This is commission. <laughs> that wasn't going to be earning any salary that every customer I bring, I'm going to end X, Y, Z. And you know what? As at when I joined, the business was already uh, multi-million. Before my very eyes, it grew to a multi-billion era business. And because I was close to see how things were done, that was my first practical experience, seeing how that you can grow a business from nothing 
to become a multi-millionaire business. And for others, it was like struggle, struggling to make ends meet. But for me, it was a training school. I've understood early enough that you don't work to earn, you work to learn. Because when you learn enough, you are going to earn more than enough. So I knew that from the beginning. So I focused on learning right there. Of course, eventually things weren't as bad as I thought. It didn't go as bad as I thought it was going to be. Because eventually, having good interpersonal skill with um, the little communication skill I acquired there, I was able to close a number of deals that earned me some good money that made me feel like, man, you are working. You know, at ways you earn, you feel, man, you are not working. But this one, I knew I was working because what an average young man we want to do, I started doing them, renting my own house, preparing for marriage, even got married with that job, got my first car with that job, you know. Gradually, things um, started picking. So, a bulk of those activities took place at my formative stage with um, the company I worked with. And I would say that happened to be the foundation for what I'm doing now.